but uh, it was originally a 90 minute session and it got rescheduled to 30 minutes, which is not a round table friendly uh, length of time. So I changed it to just a presentation and a QA and a at the end. I hope that's all right with you. So that said, I would like to talk uh, about uh, what problems uh, audio issue. So I, I would like to talk uh, to you about what problems we have with uh, software uh, RFCs and how I think we can solve them. And to be clear, this is just about uh, RFCs that uh, are used for software changes. So I'm not talking about uh, other kind of RFCs like uh, policy changes on Wikipedias and um, Yeah, so I, I wanted to say a few words about myself, but I think almost everyone here <laughs> knows who I am, so I might uh, I may just skip that. But uh, very short, I, I work for the foundation, but uh, that's not why I'm here. I have been a volunteer for a way longer time than that, and I'm interested in this topic as a volunteer who is heavily involved in movement strategy, and as you will see, this is a topic that's very relevant to movement strategy. Uh, so, so the reason I, I am talking about this now is that, uh, as you, I'm sure you know, the movement charter is being created right now. So the movement charter drafting committee is, is working on this foundational document of our movement, which is a sort of constitution. And one of the movement institutions it's supposed to define is the Technology Council. And one of the areas that the Technology Council is supposed to handle is how do we agree on what software we should develop and how do we agree on when, whether that development is successful, whether the software is good enough to be deployed on the wiki. And this is a big deal. The, the entire budget of the movement is between 100 and 200 million dollars a year and something like half of that is spent on software development. So a lot of effort goes into software development. Uh, how the software works is, is very, very much influences the experience of editors on the wikis. So, so it's important to figure out a good process for this. And uh, the current process is uh, it involves heavily RFCs, and I think RFCs are a truly terrible process for this. They, they are bad for people on all sides of, of the aisle. And I think the Movement Charter is an opportunity to define a good process, if we can agree what is a better process. Um, so what, what are the problems with uh, software RFCs? And, I'm using RFC in, in the wide sense here. So some projects actually use votes, but uh, that from the point of this topic, it's the same thing. And I, I assume everyone knows that, but uh, just in case you don't, RFC is, it stands for request for comment, and it's a very core governance mechanism of, of the wikis. It's, a, it's similar to voting, but it's a little less structured. So the main problem with software RFCs is that they are a huge waste of money. The software development costs a lot of money. Uh, a small feature is, is something like a quarter of a year for a software team to develop. A large feature can take multiple years. Uh, given uh, how much a software engineer or other kind of IT professional costs, uh, we are talking about money, donor money ranging from hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars here. And the current approach is that the foundation or some other organization, but it's mostly the Wikimedia Foundation today. So the Wikimedia Foundation decides what software it, it thinks should be developed and then works on it for a couple, couple quarters or a few years and then deploys it to the wikis. And then the wikis, if they don't like it, they organize an RFC and decide whether they think that is acceptable. 
And if the outcome is that this is a bad thing and they don't want it, then essentially you just send a million dollars of donor money down the drain. So it's very clearly we, we should agree on what we want before we spend a year on developing it. And besides the cost in money, there is also an opportunity cost, uh, because that means the foundation could have worked on something else that's more useful for the editors, but it didn't. But on, on, on the other hand, uh, RFCs let the editor communities get truly involved in decision making, not, not just being consulted and, and then someone else decides what, they, what their feedback means. They, they have actual decision making power. I think that's something that's very important to preserve. I think that uh, the, the Wikimedia movement is built on, on the volunteer time and effort of editors and they, they deserve to have a say in, in what software they get, what uh, resourcing they get, just uh, a say with a better mechanism. So maybe could, could we just have the RFCs sooner in the process? Well, not, not easily. So there isn't, isn't really, really any commitment involved in RFCs. So anyone can just decide that they don't like the RFC and run a new RFC, in part because people change over time. So if a software development process takes like uh, two years, then two years later, it's not necessarily the same editor community anymore. There are new, highly engaged editors or influencers, and sometimes even on shorter times, like for example, for the recent uh, development work on Vector, there was an RFC that decided that uh, it should be deployed. And then three months later, it actually got deployed and people didn't like it. They ran a new RFC, which had the same outcome, but it, it could have a different outcome. And then, so it you cannot really rely on on people actually holding the outcome of RFC as a commitment. And especially because uh, usually the size of RFC is seen as a way of how influential or how binding it is, the, the number of people participating in RFC, which is very reasonable in theory, but in practice it's, it's impossible to get the same level of engagement uh, when you are talking about a piece of software in the abstract then the level of engagement you get when it's actually deployed on the wiki and affecting people and they are maybe angry about it. So the, the, the size of engagement will naturally scale up as the development progresses, but the commitment still needs to be upheld somehow. And this is made worse by change aversion. So change, change aversion is, is the uh, phenomenon that people are initially unhappy even with good changes. Google did a lot of research on this. They, they measured uh, the satisfaction of their users over time. And what they found was that uh, um, a development, a satisfaction curve for a good feature looks something like this. There is a, a stable uh, level of satisfaction for the old feature. And then the new feature gets deployed, satisfaction drops down because people, people are unfamiliar with the new way of working. Suddenly things are not where you remember that they have been. Suddenly you need to think about how certain things work. Your maximum memory is not working anymore. You, it's, it's a distraction from what you actually want to do. And then if, if it's a good feature, then over time people get used to it and satisfaction goes up and people realize that it's, it's actually easier to use than the old thing and eventually you get a higher level of satisfaction. Or maybe it's a bad feature and, and uh, satisfaction goes up a little bit, but you end up with a lower level of satisfaction altogether. The problem is that RFC tends to happen at, at the bottom of the satisfaction curve. So at this point, just from user feedback, you can't really tell whether it's a good feature or a bad feature. Everyone is angry, and that's, that's the status quo that, that goes into the outcome of the RFC. And another problem is the quality of decisions. So, so just, just because uh, something like a vote is a way 
to decide that represents everyone. Uh, that it's a legitimate way of decision that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good way of decision in, in the sense that it, it makes correct choices. So RFCs are, are originally invented for things where everyone is everyone has a good understanding of the issue. Like you are you are having an RFC about the policy on how sources should be used in an article. All, all the highly engaged editors are very familiar with the policy and have experience with it. That tends to work well. But with software, often you need a lot of expertise. Uh, to understand the importance or, or the goals or the problems. And, and most participants just don't have that, uh, that expertise. This is, this is worse for software where the main, main target is not editors, but say readers, or, or it's mainly for mobile users, and most of the RFC participants are not mobile users. So you, you, you can get... Uh, you can get a decision-making mechanism which is dominated by people who don't have the right level of understanding. And they, you can't really expect uh, the hundreds of people who participate in the RFC to read a book before that to, to understand the issues well enough or, or read significant documentation. That, that would be a very large waste of volunteer time. Uh, some, some projects uh, use voting, formal voting, for example, German Wikipedia, and there the people who, like usually what you get with votes is that the people who are uh, least engaged tend to make up for the majority of the participants. So, so the outcome is dominated by people who, who haven't spent much time understanding the issue. In other projects like English Wikipedia, the, the RFC is a more flexible thing where you need to argue and then the, the weight of the arguments matters more than the number of the, the votes. This is a very nice process in theory. Uh, it was originally copied from the decision-making process of the Internet Engineering Task Force, the, the standards body that creates internet standards. So it, it definitely can work for technical decisions. But with the IETF, there is a chair who makes the decision about the arguments. On, on, on wiki projects, it tends to be very, very undefined. Like any administrator can step up and decide to close an RFC and decide which arguments are good and which arguments are bad. That makes the process very unpredictable, potentially controversial. And it also means that it's a very hard and unfair situation for the closer often. Because it, it, it puts a lot of pressure on them and they get blamed for the outcome when they close something in a way that's different from the number of votes. And, and the final problem with RFCs is uh, just the sheer scale of the communities we have. So there are uh, almost a thousand wiki projects. Uh, even if you limit it to wiki projects where there is some meaningful level of community discussion and self-reflection, we are talking about uh, hundreds of projects. So if you could run RFCs on hundreds of projects, but then there is just no way for, for the organization doing the development to take that into account. And for a lot of software features, you want a uniform outcome. Like if, if, if every wiki works differently, there are usability consequences to that, there are brand consequences to that, uh, maintenance of the software becomes much, much harder. We could have one global RFC somehow, but then that's even worse defined than, than wiki project RFCs. Like who, who would, how would we decide who gets to close and who gets to check the arguments? Uh, which, which language would we even use for the global RFC? So well, that's not really a workable solution. And there is, there is an opposite problem which gets talked about even less, which is that uh, while RFCs give, in my opinion, too much power to the editing communities over uh, whether software gets deployed, they, they get absolutely no power over what software gets created in the first place. 
So RFCs are, are kind of like a veto. You can, you can decide that you don't like what's happening, but there is, there is no way to run an RFC with the outcome that, that says that uh, we want the foundation to work on, I don't know, IP blocking software instead of a skin. There is, there is no way to influence the selection of, of new projects and to propose a new project. And that, that seems like a very important thing to figure out, because the, if, if you want to give communities real decision-making power, then that power needs to start at the planning level. So how, how would a better process look? In, in my opinion, one important part is representation. So votes just don't scale up. And votes are just not good for a sufficient level of engagement and expertise. If you want that, you almost always need a small body, a small body which you can ensure that it contains expertise and which you can ensure that it spends the necessary time to engage with the issue, to read documentation, to read research, to understand uh, why something is good or bad or important. But uh, it, it needs to be a, a legitimate body that represents the editor community. So it, it needs to go through some kind of election process. So we have a we should have a group. Uh, I am using the working name Product Council here because I think Technology Council is not a very good name for reasons I won't go into. And then the editing community should should uh, elect that body, and and that body should uh, do negotiations with the foundation. Basically, they, they should kind of uh, replace the role of the closing administrator of the RFC. So the, the community can still have a large scale discussion, but this committee would decide who is right in the discussion. The, the other key step, I think, is to have an open planning process. So instead of the current situation where the foundation just decides behind closed doors what, what projects are it's going to work on, and to be fair, the last year the foundation did a little bit to improve that by publishing the draft annual plans, but uh, I think that that wasn't very successful, both in the terms of making it easy to engage with and still, at the point it got published, there were already plans done. So I think we need a planning process where anyone can make proposals and uh, editing communities don't need to write open letters and things like that. They, they can just get in their proposals for new features into the process in an equal footing. And then uh, a third key part of what we need is experimentation and metrics because the the RFC process doesn't really have the means of incorporating that due to time constraints and due to the large scale being hard to manage. So, so we get into a lot of theoretical debates about whether something would work or whether something is good or bad for the users. So we we need a process where we can actually check that, where we need, we can agree on what things we want to measure or what experiments we want to run. And then we can do those things and, and get an evidence-based understanding of whether the feature is good. That's, that's very hard to coordinate with RFCs, but with a, a dedicated small committee, it's, it's perfectly possible. And then the, the fourth key thing is having targets. So in, instead of, of having very open-ended and unpredictable battles over whether something is good enough or whether the development process is finished, I think we, we need to agree at the very start of a development process on what are the targets that we want to reach. And the target could be something like 90% user satisfaction in surveys, or it could be something like uh, the majority of, of users can engage with the feature successfully and doesn't drop off in, in the process of going through a dialogue. So, so measurable, measurable things that demonstrate that the software is working well. And the, the product council 
or, or the community with the facilitation of the product council could agree with the developing organization, the, the foundation, on what targets uh, are the ones which, uh, which uh, show that the project is successful. And then when development gets to that point, the product council oversees the metric gathering and, and can determine that the target has actually been reached or not reached and further development is uh, necessary. Uh, what are the next steps of, of actually making this happen? As I said, I was hoping for a roundtable discussion and, and the timing didn't work out for that. Uh, so I, I think that if you are interested in moving this forward, then the next steps are there is a, a Technology Council chapter in the current Movement Charter draft, which is uh, currently very underspecified and very understandably not the main priority of the Movement Charter drafting committee because the, the fundraising and hubs and all these things are more important and more controversial. Maybe not more important, I would argue that uh, software development resourcing is very important, but but certainly more accessible to people as a topic. So my, my plan is basically to, to propose a, a draft as a starting point for how the technology council could look. I, I will, in, a, in the coming ways, I, I will create the wiki page, I will announce it on the Wikimedia L mailing list, and I hope that you can uh, participate in criticizing that draft and and uh, coming up with one that, that represents a, some level of consensus and then um, presenting that to the Movement Charter Drafting Committee. So if, if you are interested, please join that discussion. As I said, Wikimedia L is going to be the main place where I, I mention it, but I will go to Telegram and whatnot. Also, uh, if, if you want to discuss this at Wikimania, shout out to the upcoming session called Discuss Improvements to Our Collective Decision-Making Processes for Software Releases. This is by different people and from a slightly different angle, but uh, pretty much the same topic. And uh, it's a longer session. It's going to be an actual roundtable. So I think that's going to be a good opportunity to discuss the shortcomings and possible replacements of RFCs. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, then this would be a good time. Do we have a microphone? Thank you. Uh, Hello. Uh, it's not a question, but more a uh, comment. I am a board member and uh, product and technology committee member. And uh, just a couple of days ago, we had a meeting where the chief technology officer, Selena Deckelman, uh, proposed a pilot uh, product and technology council, which would be doing what what you were saying. I know that the global council is supposed to have the technical uh, technical technical council under it, but it will be several years before that. Uh, so, and we will probably have some some sort of open call. So, please watch out for it and join the Technology Council, Product and Technology Council. That's great to hear. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you uh, for this. Um, um, thank you. Um, I'm Sewell. I'm from the Movement Charter Drafting Committee, and I just wanted to follow up on what Victoria said. Um, uh, even though Wikimedia Foundation might be I going into a certain direction and, and also thinking along, it is of course also important to hear the voice of the technical community, not saying that um, Wikimedia Foundation will not do that, but it is important to have this kind of discussion. Uh, Movement Charter uh, Drafting Committee is, is 
um, always open to this kind of feedback, especially if there is community support for maybe um, uh, just taking a, a, a bit of a different course or whatever, you know. I, I'm very, very much looking forward to the exchanges that will be happening in the discussion. Thank you for taking the lead in uh, a proposal like this. Um, you showed the satisfaction th satisfaction curve. How, do, how would you see that changing with your proposal? I don't think that would be changing. I, I think that's just a constant of uh, development. I, I think the key change here is that the decision is made at the beginning of the, or before we select plans. And since we have a, a small committee and that's unlike the larger editor community, that small community is likely to have the same composition, mostly over time. They they can be the the keeper of the commitment that this was, this was agreed on. So even though right now people are unhappy and everyone finds it confusing, it will get better and we don't change our minds uh, from one day to another. Thank you for coming.